Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a new weekly update from RG Research. My name is Trevor Neal and I'm a analyst there at RG Research. We This is being recorded on Friday the 3rd of April and I am based here in London. We're going to con concentrate today on a big change that's occurring in on a international level in the stock indices. We've had a dominant pattern of the uh, US stock market and a narrow small group of tech stocks really being the driver and the force and everything else being left behind. And in particular, what has been left behind, and I'm talking in the long term here now, has, has been the Hang Seng and the Shanghai composite and the FTSE being lagging or the even the European indices which have been lagging the US indices which have been lagging the narrow group of FANG plus or Magnificent 7 stocks. Now this picture is changing a lot and this has a big implication I think for the next period of time and it's very important to not be behind the curve in these sort of things. The first thing to say as we look at this um, RRG chart. This is a long-term perspective. This is a weekly perspective. We can see in terms versus the, the world, MSCI world index um, in the middle here, uh, we've got to the right is still uh, the FANG um, and but uh, the NASDAQ is pulling back and is almost uh, moving into the lagging quadrant. The, the S&P, as is always the case, is close to the centre here because it's such a big part of the MSCI World Index. The, the DAX not too bad, the stock's not too bad, the CAC also the case, but the Dow is right in here now. It's not out here and pointing that way anymore, the US markets. Now we've seen that in the charts, we've got very mixed charts, bullish and bearish in the Magnificent Seven. Uh, we just had Apple's results, Apple's uh, relieved, the price is relieved that uh, it wasn't as bad as expected. And these are not the sort of messages where we got big upside surprises of growth. Actually, revenues are down in Apple. It's just a relief that it wasn't down as much. And honestly, I could foresee a, a time when, we, when we're looking at Apple and say, let's say this AI bet that they're making doesn't bear fruit, doesn't, isn't as exciting as expected. Really, you haven't had anything new in Apple since the Apple 12 when, when 5G that forced people to change their phones. Is this going to be big enough to make people dump their old Apples and buy new ones? I can see a situation where Apple could really lose its shine completely. And that's already happening in some of the other tech stocks. The rhetoric is changing a bit. But the hate towards the couple of other areas is, uh, is I think, overdone now. And I think the next phase of uh, for the market where the money is to be made is, is not in the difficult conditions that we're seeing in those uh, markets and indiv individual stocks, but in ones that we haven't been looking at for a long time and have been avoiding. And you can guess what I'm most interested in here it, in, is I'm looking at a long, I'm looking for long tails heading northeast. And we've got three here, really good ones here. The, the FTSE making new highs and but lagging way, way behind other major indices. The, the Shanghai Composite and the Hang Seng. Long tail here, swift movement, lots of momentum. This is possibly on its way around into the leading quadrant. And these ones here dropping away. So let's have a look at these. First of all, look at the struggle that's going on in the US market and the tech, tech area in particular. Now looking at the S&P, yeah, clearly we've come a lot off the, uh, the high here, uh, the 5,250 5, roughly there, pulling back to 50% of this move up here and we, you could say we're stabilised here. But other people are seeing heads and shoulders tops in place for the S&P. In the sort of Twitter sphere, I see as many bearish S&P charts done by charters with head and shoulders there. And then I've seen about half the, my colleagues are bullish. I think it's very uncertain times. I see the fundamentals with the, this mistake that people have made about the, the 
interest rate cuts before the end of the year the economists made and maybe the Fed made as well but the market didn't and that was very much shown in the market that these rate cuts expectations were too high and then also the sort of gradual deterioration and perhaps the fizz going out and of the froth of, uh, of the AI boom. Now we have to deliver something which is actually useful and, and not just for making naughty pictures of Taylor Swift uh, have some real uh, purpose to it and uh, some proof of it. So what have we got in the chart? We uh, don't t- try and speculate on those kind of things, do we? Well, this is a weekly chart of the S&P. We don't normally look at that, but it, you can see that we've come down, drop 50%. The MACD has crossed a negative. Now it's, it's not a bear market. I think that's a bit strong, but it is going down. We've come down below 50% in the RSI, rallied a little bit, but turning down again. So it's all rather weak and iffy. So the Nasdaq, um, tech-heavy Nasdaq, has been hit even harder with a 61.8% uh, retracement. Stabilising there is true, but heading towards potentially stiffening resistance in this weekly chart here. The MACD is negative and the gap is widening still, and the RSI is very weak in, indeed here. So it's mixed messages for this market, but I think that it's difficult. That's the thing. It's the easy days of this sort of behavior is behind us. Uh, Now it's tricky. And uh, without going into the the individual stocks, the FANG stocks, many of them are looking at best iffy and some of them are looking downright bearish. And so that force that has been leading and pulling the market up is, uh, is losing its power and influence. So why concentrate on difficult uh, markets uh, now that the Uh, easy period is behind us let's go to something which is clearer now something that we've hated since 2021 even before that as well that was a rally from from a previous high there at uh, 2021 the it's been in the downtrend and on a relative basis been absolutely appalling behavior it's been a leader it's been in the lagging quadrant heading southwest for a long period of time. It's just on a, you know, better being in anything else but at the Hang Seng. But look here now, we saw um, how it swiftly swung round in the uh, RRG chart, long tail going round through the improving quadrant, heading towards the leading quadrant. And we've got a major long-term trend change taking place. The MACD, and this is where I first uh, mentioned it, was in February, as, as crossed up. But now we've finally taken out the downtrend line. And this is a real beauty. So this is a weekly chart, and we've got lining up extremely well. One, two, three, four, and now this breakout here. It's a powerful break, and I think this is a seismic change in direction. This is the area to be in, and all those stocks that you've forgotten are uh, are things to look at again. So here is the Hang Seng on a daily chart. There's that long, long downtrend line, broken, very powerfully broken. We've got uh, now support at these two highs of 17,000, the round number. 18,000, the round number is also uh, support for us. The MACD, the gap is widening, the momentum is increasing, the RSI is soaring ahead. Yes, it's very high, but it is still pointing up. If it pulls back, then I think it's going to be around 18,000 that it could settle, and you would want to, you might see that as a, some sort of opportunity, if, depending on the behavior um, of it. But at the moment, it does look as though it's moving uh, forward, and then if I bring in some more history, we can see that the next resistance is at basically 19,000. It's quite strong. Uh, A break of the uh, 20,000 would be very good. And it all looks as though we're on our way up very strongly here. So this is a big change from something to avoid to, to something which is taking the position of leader. So the Shanghai Composite also turn, turning around and moving up strongly on a relative basis. Notice how it was moving in in very similar way to the Hang Seng. However, its downtrend line started off the, after the three tops that we had, the first one in 2020, up at the 3,750 area, one, two, three tops in place, then downtrend. I've drawn this as dashed because it's not a very well-drawn trend line, but clearly we have got lower highs in place 
close in here and we are way below it at the moment and we're moving towards quite stiff resistance from 3200 to 3400 area. The MACD on the weekly chart is bullish and the RSI is also bullish as well. But you can see comparing this with the Hang Seng, the one which is a clear winner in the ch chart construction is the Hang Seng and uh, it, it's broken the long-term downtrend it's on its way it's got power behind it and uh, yes it's it's strong and it probably will pull back at some point but these should be could be interpreted as as opportunities and the trend on an absolute basis and a relative basis has turned strongly up so of the two the preferred one to be involved with is the Hang Seng now this is a long-term chart going back to the end of 20, but uh, this is the break to new all-time highs. But really the big break occurred from this ascending triangle that we talked about a lot of, at the time. Uh, once it broke through the 7,500 or 7,700 area, uh, this was a surge towards the resistance, then it failed, pulled back, and now it's cleared it. It's very looking extremely strong at this point. The MACD is doing the same. Notice the higher lows in place here. That's a very strong structure. Gap is widening as well. RSI is strong. So just magnify in a little bit. So the this is the daily chart still, but um, magnified on the on the footy. There is support at. 8,045, 8,000 around number probably is the big support. Then at 7,800, then the top of the triangle, and this is really very strong support at uh, 7,730, uh, and they've got higher lows in place here. We can draw in, and I'll do it now live, draw it in this nice uptrend line here. So all technical analysts can use this. But we, at this moment, we've got strong upside momentum with the, the MACD very positive here and the gap widening and the RSI pushing ahead strongly again here. Little pause seems to be over at this point. Short term support is here at 8,100. We haven't got any resistance because it's, it's new all time highs. So the dog that we always were avoiding any index except the FTSE. This has changed now. It's in a bull market. It's got a lot of catching up to do. So there's quite a lot of potential for this. I can't say where it, it's likely to get to, but it's in blue sky and it, uh, it's got, it looks as though it could move much further up from here. But of course, all these journeys are zigzags and some zags are quite powerful. If we get one, then I think the support will come in at 8,050. Okay, thank you very much indeed, everybody. I hope you find this useful. Just one message today for me is that the, not to say you abandoned the US stock market or anything like that, but if, but the clear dominance of the, the FANG stocks or the magnificent stocks has, has really broken up now completely. It's debatable whether the uh, the US stock market as a whole is putting in a top. Um, there's mixed opinion about, amongst my colleagues about that. We are pulled back by Fibonacci amounts in different indices and, and are holding there. You know, it's much more tricky than it has been. It isn't no longer a one-way street, but there's always somewhere uh, to go. And it's often the places that we don't like, um, that we didn't like, and that's uh, been, uh, I think, the Hang Seng in preference to the um, Shanghai Composite and, uh, and the, the dog, the FTSE. Uh, all those are turning and have a lot of potential, I think, on the upside, particularly for, on a relative basis. I thank you very much indeed. I hope you find this useful. This is Trevor Neal from ROG Research. Thank you. Wish, I wish you all the very best and may the trend be with you. Goodbye.